Hi everyone, it's Andrea and today I have another bullet journaling video for you. My very first YouTube video was a bullet journaling video and it was all about bullet journaling for book bloggers. And this video will go into some of that bullet journaling for book bloggers as well. But basically what happened is I started this journal in June and it is almost done now. It's the end of October and I'm just gonna finish it up in October. So I got a new journal and this video is all about me setting up my new journal. So it's gonna go from the very beginning, from my key, from the calendar, from my future log, and then it'll go straight into my November monthly modules. And then I'm also going to include some of my big major modules that I use a lot, like modules that I use to plan my blog and modules for checking out library books and things like that. So the majority of this video is going to be me just drawing all the modules like a plan with me video and you can see all those different modules that I make for this new bullet journal and then also at the end I think I will probably kind of describe some of those modules in case you're not sure exactly what I'm doing with those modules especially the book blogging modules that I've come up with to help myself. So there will be personal, you know, modules in here, just regular daily, monthly modules that I'll be putting in here, but there also will be some more for book bloggers and for readers. So this is my old journal. It was the moleskin dotted large, they call this large, but it's really not that big. Um, it's about the size of the book, a smaller book. And I really like this one. It's not too rigid. It's not too big, it's not too small. I really like the size. It did have kind of some bleeding through issues. So I've heard that this one is just a slight bit better with the pages and there's not really any bleeding through issues. There's also two bookmarks in this one rather than just one. It's also the dotted one. There's page numbers on all of these pages. You don't have to number the pages, which is nice because I forgot a lot of times to number these pages. And there's also a index at the beginning of this. So you don't really have to make your own index. This is also a hardback, which I'm not sure if I'm going to like as much as the softback, but I wanna try it out, see the difference. Um, this is also a slight, slightly bit bigger than this one. I know you can get even bigger bullet journals, um, but these, this is the size. I kind of wanted to keep it in the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and start.
Okay, so I think those are the only modules that I'm going to make today. I'll go ahead and go over some of them just in case there's some that you guys don't really know how I use them. Like I said before, the Lystrom has the index at the beginning, so that's what these first three pages are. Then there's a blank page, and then it starts with the dotted pages. So I went ahead and just did my key here. I use the official bullet journal code. I've thought about changing it up, but uh, it works for me right now, so I'll just stick with it for now. And then I have my calendar here. And I just did six months because my last bullet journal only lasted five months. So I figure this one will probably be about the same, maybe a little bit more because there's more pages in this one. But if it goes past April, I can always add more to it. And then I just added this quote here. I maybe should have planned it out a little bit better, but I mostly just kind of freehanded it, as you could see. I like it though. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then my future log here um, is all ready to go. And like, like with the calendar, I only did six months because I really doubt that this bullet journal is gonna go much farther than that. And then I go straight into my monthly spreads. So I have several things that I do every month. First, there's the month at a glance, and I will fill that out with you know just things that are going on each day. My November tasks, that's of course tasks that I want to do in the month of November that don't have to be done on a specific day, but I just want to do them during that month. My November TBR, of course, will be the books that I want to read in November. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, another thing I do every month in my monthly spread is my blog calendar. And I actually did two different kinds of calendars here that you saw before. This one is for after I have written a post and it's ready to be published, I schedule it and then I write the name of the post here. And then I normally give a little code like R for review or D for discussion. And this is just kind of for me to see what days I post things and just kind of visualize my month of posts. So I have backlog reviews here. I list the books that I have yet to review and then I do a, I do a feature with my son called Kiddos Corner Reviews and so I have I'll list the backlogged Kiddos Corner Reviews up here. I just use whatever empty space there is left for that. And then another thing I do on my monthly is my monthly tracker. It's got all kinds of things, you know, personal things and then there's also blogging stuff involved as well and um, video stuff. And this is not necessarily things that I have to do every day, just some things I have to do every day, like my medicine, but um, other things is just tracking it, like my anxiety. I hope I don't have anxiety every day, but um, it's kind of nice to see on the days that I have anxiety and see if there's any kind of pattern with that. And then I also, in my monthly spread, I have a list of two by November. If you guys noticed when I started writing this, I started writing October. So I turned the O into this flower and I think it actually looks okay. Um, I was like, oh no, what do I do? I totally messed this up. Do I rip the page out? But it's numbered and I don't want to rip a page out. But so anyway, I think it turned out okay. And then I have my November book releases. I normally list books that I know that are coming out that month so that I can remember when I'm at the bookstore or at the library, oh yeah, there's that one book coming out this month that I wanna read. And then I just added this to my monthly spread, my videos. So I just have this easy kind of module for it just where I can list the name of the video or the idea for the video if I don't know exactly what I wanna call it and then just kind of plan out the day that I want to record, the day that I want to edit it, and the day that I want to actually have it up. And then I just left a room here for um, video ideas for the next month. And this is one of my favorite modules that I've done. I came up with this idea myself in my last bullet journal. It's just a way for me to keep track of the library books that I've checked out. And I based it off of the old library due date cards and I just list the title here, the date that they're due, and then the date that they're returned. 
And it's just a nice way for me to keep track of all the books that I have out of the library because I've been checking out a lot of books from the library this year. And then this is another one of my calendars. This spread takes forever to make, as you could probably tell. But I really like this format. I just don't know. I still don't really know if this is the best format for what I use it for, but it's working for now. Basically, this is for me for planning my blog um, so I can plan my posts. So I would write in on the first that I need to write a post and then whatever day that that post goes up, I would have written down, you know, that that's the day that it goes up. So it's just a real easy way for me to kind of plan all my posts um, in advance. So I did a November calendar and then I also did a December calendar. So that way I have a couple months ahead to plan all my posts. And so, cause I normally kind of look ahead to at least the next month to know what I'm gonna do this month as well. And then I also like to do a review schedule because a lot of times I'll get review books pretty far in advance. And so I want to kind of schedule them in and I might not have one of these calendars for that month yet. So I'll put in review books, and but then I'll also put in any other book that I didn't necessarily receive for review. Any book that I'm going to review, I kind of try and um, keep track of in here as well. It's just a way for me to kind of plan the days that I want to review um, a lot more in advance than just these monthly calendars because with this I can go pretty far ahead and I can make even more of these if I need to go even farther ahead. And then this is just kind of the books that I need to read so that way I kind of can make a list of all the review books that I have and books that I need to read because I have my TBRs but Sometimes I might forget, oh yeah, I've got that review book that I need to review for January and I don't want to forget about it. So I'll have that listed here. And then the last one I did was the reviews to cross post. And I just made this up. This is the very first time I'm doing this module. I realized that I have gotten really, really, really far behind on all the cross posting and um, just kind of uh, housekeeping things that I do after a review goes up. I do a lot of different things and I also recently moved from Blogger to WordPress a few months ago so I still have some editing to do with a lot of posts and just different things I need to do for them. So I just wanted to have a list so that maybe I could do a little bit of it at a time rather than trying to get them all done in one day. I wanted to do a lot of this during Blogiesta, but I didn't get a chance to really do that. So I decided that I would make a list here. I thought maybe I could just do one here and there and not have to feel like I have to do all of them at once. And that way I don't feel so bogged down, but I can chip away at one every once in a while. So I just have a spot here for the title. And then I have a spot for each of the things that I need to do for them. And um, that way I can just, you know, try and get those done and keep track of the ones too. Because I used to use my phone to kind of keep track of that stuff. And I really, since I started using my bullet journal, I really try not to use my phone or anything else. I try to get it all in here. So I think this will help me get that all in here and keep track of all of those as well. So also I'll go, I'll go ahead and say that um, I like the Leuchtturm so far, although it does really seem like there is some bleeding through. Now I write really heavy sometimes, so I can understand why <laughs> other people might not have that problem, but you know, you. Yeah. That's really, you can see through there a lot. And I don't really like that. I don't feel like the moleskin really did that. Um, and you know, look, you can see, obviously I was writing down hard because there's an imprint here on this page and this page from that quote. So, I mean, obviously I was writing down hard, but 
it's it's kind of a shame that that you can see so much through the page now when i get more into my daily list and stuff maybe it won't be as noticeable and maybe once i get this all filled out it won't be as noticeable either but i'm not finding that it doesn't bleed through it doesn't necessarily bleed through everywhere like it doesn't there has been a couple times though where my pen this pen has bled through these kind of the um the tombos haven't bled through but you can see them through the other side so i mean i guess there's really kind of no getting around seeing some of the things through there but it's just it is really kind of a shame that you can see so much through the page you know so I don't know. I don't know if that's just me pressing down super duper duper hard or if that's just how this paper is. But anyway, hopefully I'll like the Leuchtturm, but if not, then the next time I'll just go back to the Moleskine. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know which one you like better, the Moleskine or the Leuchtturm, and I will talk to you later. Bye.